She is an Amazon princess. A power icon for women all over the world. Today, we talk about Wonder Woman. Let's see what we've got. Hello Geek Fortress, how's everybody doing today? I hope your day is going fantastic. Today, we're welcoming you to Comic Book Quickie once more. The only place where the Speed Force stops by for coffee every once in a while. Yeah. Today's episode is dedicated to women all over the world. Especially women who are battling, have battle, or have survived cancer. This one's for you. So what comes to mind when you think Wonder Woman? For some of you guys, you may think Linda Carter. Some of you guys may think Gal Gadot. You know, um, depending on what era you grew up, or who you grew up with, or what mediums you grew up with, different things come to mind. But we can all agree on one thing. The fact that she's an icon. Created by American psychologist and writer, William Moulton Marston. His wife was actually a co-creator. Elizabeth Holloway Marston and who, the person who drew it was H.G. Peters H.G. Peters H.G. Peters Hard to pronounce sometimes She is a demigoddess. She is the princess of Themyscira and She is one of the Justice League founders and original members some of you guys might not know this, but the look and physique of Diana Prince and or Wonder Woman, it's actually inspired by uh, this woman called Olive Byrne, who actually was kind of like a third wheel in the love relationship of the husband and wife of the Marston. So that's, that's, that's awkward. It's like, honey, I base this wondrous woman on my lover. Her first appearance was in All-Star Comics number 8, that was in December of the year 1941, so we're talking about World War II era. Her first cover debut was until a month later, on the year of 1942, on January, when she debuted in Sensation Comics number 1. Do you know that even though her name was Diana, she adopted the alias Diana Prince after a nurse that she met during war. Uh, Wonder Woman met this nurse during war named Diana Prince, so she took the alias after she was out of the picture. She liked it, she respected her, so she decided to be Diana Prince. Depending on the origin story, she was either sculpted from the ground up by um, her mom Hippolyta, and then the gods blew life on her. Other stories have emerged when it's actually she, she, she's actually the straight-up daughter of Zeus. So, uh, Hippolyta and Zeus, <whistles> Wonder Woman. She's been trained by the Amazons, that legendary group of women warriors who are strong, bigger, stronger, and who are unfamiliar with the land of man. The funny thing about that is that in the comic books, even though the Amazons are away from the land of man. Originally, they were there to protect the land of man, but they decided that they couldn't handle it. It wasn't exactly a good thing. Men do war, they kill, they rape. They washed their hands and they left to an island. She possesses Amazonian technology, if you would call it, uh, such as the Last of Truth, who is unbreakable as well as whoever is wearing around them will never lie. The truth will come up no matter what. Her bracelets, which are made of indestructible material, no matter what hits them, no matter what touches them, she can reflect bullets, she can take punches, and they don't break. They don't even scratch. They're just that cool. And she has a really cool tiara that she can throw like a boomerang and boop, catch right back. She learned hand-to-hand -hand combat with the Amazon. She learned archery. She learned hunting. She learned surviving. She learned gathering. She her, uh, she also learned how to uh, do guard shielding and sword wielding. So this woman is a really, really, really powerful representation of a woman, of a female. Do you know that from the year 1960 on is when she first was introduced in the Justice League? Before this, 
she was mostly shown in comic books where she was in trouble or she was the damsel in distress originally she couldn't fly or had like the extra powers that she has now but the creators were kind of cynical about showing her as this weak character who always got in trouble got tied up and then she had to get herself out of that before people take advantage of her so the character has evolved a lot from then she went from a damsel in distress to a power character did you know that batman himself calls her the best melee fighter he's ever seen and if batman calls you that you don't take that for granted the man knows she can kick his ass yeah what kind of baddies does she face well Besides certain human characters, she also goes up against gods, such as Ares and Hades. That's right, that's the gods of war and the underworld, respectively. And then she has such characters, villains as well, as Cheetah, uh, Circle, or Giganta. Also big baddies. She's been played on television by Linda Carter, uh, on TV, I'm sorry, on uh, movies by Gal Gadot, and on uh, the Justice League cartoon by Susan Eisenberg. I know you guys are familiar with that voice, uh, a lot of us grew up with that cartoon, and uh, we love it, and we love that portrayal of Wonder Woman. So what are her powers and abilities? Well, as I said before, she was trained by the Amazons, and on top of that, currently she has super strength, she has fly, she has a very high vulnerability to stuff, um, she has, she's very quick, she can deflect stuff with the indestructible cuffs, and uh, the lasso of truth, which is indestructible, she can tie up Doomsday, and Doomsday will not be able to break it. So, and on top of that, archery, hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, she can take on Batman, and uh, she is one of those characters who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman. I know some of you guys may not think so, but I believe so. She can punch or slap Superman, and he will feel it. Yeah. Do you know that the God of War himself trained her as she was growing up? That's right, Ares, I don't mean Kratos, I mean Ares, God of War joke, but um, laugh. Before the events of Crisis and Infinite Earth, like I said before, she couldn't fly, she wasn't that powerful. Boom, Crisis on Infinite Earth hits, she comes back with extra strength, she can fly on her own. This is what leads to her kind of drifting away from the invisible jet. That's right, she used the invisible jet before more often because she couldn't fly. So in order to get from point A to point B, she had to take the invisible jet. If you wanna catch Wonder Woman now a day, in, uh, more than in the Batman vs Superman movie, and in the Justice League movie coming up uh, in a year, I believe, you can also find her in the DC Rebirth storyline, in which um, currently she cannot get back into Olympus, she cannot use the lasso of truth, it's just not working for her. It's almost like she has lost her demigoddess stats. She remembers both timelines, pre-crisis and now, and also New 52. So she has several memories of her origins, which she's constantly fighting nowadays because she doesn't remember where she came from. And she has recently reached out to Cheetah to help her out, but Cheetah is also forgetting everything. So whoever is messing up, the line that was caused by the Flashpoint Paradox. Dr. Manhattan. Is now affecting everybody in the DC Universe. I don't know who it could be. Dr. Manhattan. I want to put money on it. It's also really worth mentioning that she's part of the best trinity of superheroes. Superman. Batman. And Wonder Woman. On Friday, October 21st of 2016, the United Nations mentioned her and made her an honorary member and ambassador for all women in the United Nations. Gal Gadot and Linda Carter received the award and the plaque that they give. And it was a great ceremony. Some people are against it. I am 100% with it. She's an American icon. She represents strength. She represents an American woman. Not only that, she represents a world woman. And she is a perfect example of somebody, somebody who has battled and who has become more than a sex symbol 
and it's actually a symbol for patriotism and world peace. Thank you so much guys for watching. Let's not forget that this is October, it's pink month. It's breast cancer awareness month. Uh, if you're a woman, if you're over 40, or you think or you're self-checking yourself and you find that there's something that shouldn't be there, please get checked. Go get a mammogram, go to your doctor, make sure you get checked. Cancer, it's, it's, it's not a funny thing. One out of eight American women will develop it. Those are not good odds. If you see it, if you see something that shouldn't be there, go to the doctor, get checked. And it also affects men. Very rarely, but it does happen. So be aware, spread the awareness, and just love each other. And for everybody who has survived, who's currently fighting, and is watching this video, I give you all my strength. I wish you all the strength in the world. You can do it. Keep fighting. Don't give up. And most of it all, cancer. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me in this comic book quickie. I hope it wasn't good for you as it was for me. It was pretty good. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are awesome. Please drop us a line. Give us a comment. Leave us a like. Tell us what you think. Give us ideas for new comic book quickies coming up. We have a new series coming next week where we're going to tell you everything geeky that happened this month. Do not miss it. We're going to have a special appearance by another Geek Fortress member who is going to be helping us make that video. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. I hope you have recuperated from the Walking Dead season premiere. If you haven't, neither have I. Don't even worry about it. You guys do me a favor. Stay awesome and geek on. Long live Wonder Woman. <laughs>